Hey guys. So yes, Joseph here. Welcome to Season 18, Cognitive Mechanics. We're going to be discussing the third cognitive axis today, also known as Spear and Bow. And uh, I will admit that uh, my show notes are completely destroyed and lost and accidentally disappeared. I have no idea where they are. So, but that's okay because I know the content well enough that I shouldn't really need notes anyway. That being said, I would like to start off uh, with a quick announcement. The uh, How to Parent Lectures Season 23 Episode 3 is about to drop for the Apprentice Membership. I highly recommend you guys get involved with the How to Parent series. We have one more episode of Pedagogues to drop uh, for Season 14. And then we're going to be going really deep into Season 23 uh, for the Apprentice uh, level again. And then coming back to Season 14 again. Maybe even doing a mix-up here and there. But I'm just giving you guys a heads up that this is a thing. And uh, you might want to check this out or potentially upgrade uh, to get into the uh, parenting series. Uh, I think uh, this particular lecture was a little bit more to the point, but I think it uh, gave some practical examples as to how to help people parent ENTJs. Hashtag commercial over. That being said, uh, we're doing our usual uh, cognitive mechanics rigmarole uh, with uh, our trusty whiteboard right now. So, and uh, while I am actually preparing said whiteboard, I am going to uh, actually say hello to some of you in the chat and remind you all of our, oh my gosh, the cat get like stuck into the bathroom right now. I, I hope not. I'm gonna remind you that we have a Q and A session at the end of uh, this uh, presentation. For those of you in the live chat, uh, please do your best to withhold your questions until that Q&A session, lest I find myself like, I don't know, getting distracted. But I mean, if you have to ask a question, then go ahead and ask. I mean, I'm not going to get all upset about it. Um, so yeah. Okay. Uh, the third. Oof. Apparently, I have uh, really bad handwriting. Um, it's not that y'all are uh, surprised about that in the least. All right, cool. So, there we go, third cognitive axis. And uh, yeah, Waffy ate my homework, that's true. Although my dog has uh, changed homes, he's now my father-in-law's emotional support animal, which is pretty cool. So yeah, that's that's definitely a thing. And uh, yeah, time to start on my walk, okay. Let's see uh, who's here tonight. All right. Uh, okay, cool. All right, so third cognitive axis, spear and bow. <laughs> yeah, handwriting is awful, but the thing is, I mean, if you're SE inferior, most SE inferiors just assume they have awful handwriting when the reality of the situation is they probably have better handwriting than they realize, but that's just, like, another thing. Okay, so season 18, we've been discussing uh, cognitive mechanics on a regular basis, at least in terms of these uh, private lectures and then getting folks out in the email to uh, see this. Um, by the way, guys, if you want to get a chance to be in the live chat... Uh, for season 18, just become an initiate uh, member and uh, at least, or is an apprentice. Initiate member has access to view them. I think, is it an apprentice that is able to actually participate in the live chat? I don't remember. It's a membership tier. So become, you know, whatever membership tier that is to be able to uh, see it and have access to it thereof. Pretty awesome. Uh, but anyway, we've been discussing all of the different components of cognitive mechanics, uh, like cognitive transitions, cognitive axes. Eventually, we're going to be talking about cognitive orbit and actually doing a deep dive into cognitive orbit in the near future in the uh, coming months. 
because uh, there are four different cognitive orbits and uh, we haven't really discussed them very much and it represents an entirely new way to interpret the type grid as well. It's, it's fantastic, it's amazing, uh, and I'm very much looking forward to getting all of us uh, present for, uh, you know, cognitive orbit. But let's, you know, talk a little bit more about cognitive axis as well. So the uh, third cognitive axis is known as spear and bow, which is also known as uh, introverted uh, feeling versus extroverted thinking, or TE, right? And the reason for that is, is that FI and uh, TE are on an axis with each other, which means what affects one really affects the other. And uh, this is also the first decision-making um, decision-making uh, axis, right? It's all about decision-making, decision-making axis. We would, like the first or second axis was talking about perceptions. That's like gathering information, right? Where it's all about info gathering, info gathering uh, for uh, perception, right? So perception functions or is all about how you uh, see the world, basically. Whereas judgment functions, also known as decision-making functions, is all about how, what do you do with that information, basically, right? So at the end of the day, if you really want to get down to like the Jungian aspect about it, decision-making access is all about judgment. It's about your judgment, how you judge things, how you make decisions about things, right? And Spear and Bow uh, is, you know, half the people on the planet utilize Spear and Bow and their egos for decision-making. And it's pretty awesome. And because the presence of the trickster function you end up actually really only having access to three of the four total judgment uh, functions within your head because you have a trickster function or you have a demon function and it's just so low you're not really going to use it very well until you either develop your demon function or develop your trickster function but that takes an entire lifetime so the majority of your life you really only have access to the first two in your ego and then as you start to develop you get access to the other ones and when you start developing your personal wisdom and and going into your shadow, etc., uh, to uh, you know, in, in, when you're using, when you're developing the shadow side of your mind, also known as your unconscious, you gain access to the other decision-making functions. That's what I'm saying. Uh, and within cognitive development, there's a component in there for cognitive orbit, but I'm not really going to talk about that. Although I have been discussing cognitive orbit somewhat. Uh, within the context of um, season 23 because the parenting lectures this is one of the reasons why I pushed back season 23 a little bit even though I already started it because we were a little behind in season 18 cognitive mechanics and I really wanted to catch us up to cognitive orbits so that season 23 becomes a little bit more relevant right and that's why I did that uh, but uh, be that as it may uh, from a uh, mechanics point of view, it's really important that you understand the distinction between perception functions and judgment functions. Judgment functions are T-I-F-E or F-I-T-E. How a person makes decisions or judges the world around them based on the information or perceptions that they have, uh, essentially. Um, I am going to take a photo of what I am doing right now, and then I'm going to text that to Railgun, because uh, she's at work right now. And I, that way she understands that uh, I am live uh, right now, because I think she forgot. Anyway, so, but by now I'm sure everyone's asking like, okay, Chase, that's great. Why are we calling it spear and bow? Like, why is that? The reason why is uh, when it comes to extroverted thinking, let's let's actually talk about extroverted thinking. And, and this is going to be kind of a fun lecture because I'm going to make lots of drawings and I'm going to make fun of people in the live chat. So uh, I'm going to start making fun of Marcelino and Cayman and Candice uh, present uh, today. So uh, we're going to actually draw uh, you guys in here. So who's who, who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? Uh, we're going to we're going to put Candice in here. So. Candace, let's see here. Let's see. Candace, here's Candace. Okay, so we have Candace in play now. 
Um, we're going to give her some, um, I don't know, some cool hair of some kind. Although this is probably not the best color. But, uh, I don't know, maybe maybe she just had her hair done. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's red hair. I, I don't know. It's, it's possible. It's possible. And we're going to give her a smiley face. All right, we got Candace in the house. All right. But then we're going to have Cayman. And then we're going to have Marcelino. And then we're going to have... Uh, uh, let's see. We we got anthrax over here. We got we got anthrax. We got Marcelino. We got Cayman. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, thank you all for uh, participating in uh, the board today. Uh, Vegeta hair. Okay. That's not Vegeta hair. Although if if you really if you really need that, uh, I'll just say that uh, you're over nine thousand, and we'll call that good. Uh, Ronald McDonald, you don't need to say that. That's like really mean, okay? Like no. Uh, so, but Candace is over nine thousand right now. Uh, so uh, yeah, um, uh, yes, Candace over nine thousand. So she's over nine thousand, and right now she has basically her FI and her TE. So what is that TE actually doing? Well, let's look at what that TE is doing. It is having a grand old time. Mmm, yes. Sucking in all those amazing thoughts from all these guys. All these thoughts, all these wonderful ideas and things. And then it's going into her brain like this. And then it's coming out of her brain over here. And then over here we have this amazing uh, apparatus. Uh, so I'm probably really bad at drawing this apparatus here, but I will do uh, my best. Um, so basically we have it going this way and going this way. And then we have this here, this here, and then we have this here, this here, and then we have a plate here and we have a plate here. And this is our scale. Okay, we have a scale and her FI is weighing it out, right? Okay, so then we have a scale and she's FIing at positive and negative based on all of the information that she has uh, gathered uh, from uh, Marcelino and Anthrax and uh, Cayman. Okay, and predominantly this is how spear and bow basically works, but why is it called a bow? Well, if you look at um, let's actually like look at like like an actual bow here. Let's put a bow here, you know, bow and arrow, um, etc. So yeah, we have a bow and arrow. Okay, cool. It's a really terrible bow and arrow, I know. Okay, but this bow and arrow basically represents, hey, every single arrow, you know, she's she's shooting an arrow at these guys, basically a a, a an inquiry of. How do you know? Question mark. Okay. How do you know? Every time a TE user asks you, how do you know that? Or how do you know this? They're shooting an arrow at you, basically. So she's got her little arrows. They're her how do you know arrows coming out right here. How do you know? How do you know? Oh, another arrow to Cayman's head right here. Poor guy. How do you know that, Cayman? And his TEI trickster is just like, oh, man, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Well, how do you know that? Candace is like, how do you know that? You know, because Candace, she's got she's got TE inferior, she's an INFP. You got Cayman and Marcelino, they're both ENFPs, and you got uh, Anthrax, you know, it's TI user and whatnot. No, we're not getting ducks. We're, we're we're not we're not putting a duck over here. Besides, I don't think I could even uh, draw a duck. Actually, maybe I can. Maybe I can draw a duck. So, all right, there's our there's our duck. Okay, no, we're not doing that. We're not doing the duck. Anyway, so the point is, lots of arrows. It's all about how do you know this? This is what TE is. Okay, so you got to see expert thinking as this thing where it's a ranged 
a ranged move. It's like it's like you're tuning in to what other people are thinking. Just like an extroverted feeling thing is almost ranged. That's why it's a mace because a mace is like it's long, it's ranged, it can hit multiple sides because it's spherical and it's like a giant hammer basically. But again, it's a ranged thing and the surface area of the mace, it's blunt. It's not very uh, precise like the sword is. The sword cuts and it's pretty precise, you know, for the TI sword. FE is a mace and it's got a lot of surface area that the mace can actually impact, etc., for extroverted feeling, which we'll talk about a little bit on the next lecture. But for bow or TE, extroverted thinking, it is a bow because you could shoot multiple arrows, pop, 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 going Legolas style, you know what I'm saying? Or maybe Robin Hood style with their TE and those those arrows are basically mental signals being sent out by Candace's brain, which is over 9,000 and uh, to the point where she's like coming to a realization where she literally knows what everyone else is thinking around her. It's literally, okay, guys, I'm going to say this, but you're just going to have to get it. So you remember how I talked about how NE equals uh, uh, prescience, right? Prescience, also known as uh, precognition, right? Well, TE equals telepathy, okay? Telepathy. TE, extroverted thinking, is literally telepathy. So if you're an extroverted thinker, you're a telepath. If you're an extroverted intuitive, right, you are a, um, you know, and uh, an FE equals empath, okay? So you have telepaths, you have empaths, okay, right? You know, um, introverted sensing is more of just like strength, etc. cetera, uh, you know, and then NI is like force of will, uh, um, and then, uh, right, and then you have uh, what is the other few superpowers? Because I like I like using superpowers uh, for each of the functions and whatnot. There's a couple other ones, but uh, introverted sensing is like strength and endurance, like super strength. to go to the introverted sensors, right? And FI is the uh, is the sympath, right? They're the sympath, and then you have the SE user, right? The SE user equals. Um, um, like, uh, gosh, it's when they pick up a physical object and they know, I always, uh, I always forget what it is. It's like, uh, psychokinesis or something like that. I, 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 I always forget it, but it's this thing where they pick up an object and they know the entire history of the object itself. SC, the object memory thing. Yes, Cayman, thank you. So, um, anyway, uh, so you gotta understand that if you're a TE user, you're a telepath. That's just, you just always know what other people are thinking, right? And that's great because that enables you to figure out because it's on an axis because, you know, let's uh, let's actually like kind of erase the board here. Oh, there goes the duck, sorry. Oh, there goes the bow, whoops. Yep, and then all this stuff here, right? And no, we're, we're, we're racing right now, yes. Good. Okay, so so yeah, TE is telepathy, right? Telepathy, and then we have sympathy up here, right? Sympathy. So in order to get sympathy, right? And sympathy really comes from this process of FI right here, weighing things out, right? So Candace is extracting all of the thoughts because she's a thought vampire who is a telepath and she's aware of what everything that's in Cayman's head, which I guess since he's TI trickster, that, that may present some difficulty for Candace, even with her telepathy being over 9,000 at this point. Same thing with Marcelino, but Anthrax, he's in the house, he's a TI user, it's all good, Anthrax got that, he's got it on lockdown, and she just starts locking in on Anthrax, and she's like, ooh, what do you know? And she, she's going over there asking him questions, well, how do you know this, well, how do you know that, etc. And then it's able, she's able to use her telepathy to build a, a matrix within herself of everything that Anthrax knows, and once she's extracted everything with her rationale or her telepathy, telepathy also equals rationale, Okay, right? And then it becomes weighed out, and it becomes weighed out, so then it's sent here to the FI, right? And then it's weighed, it's weighed out with FI, okay? And then 
she's like, okay, I can feel or I can value, okay, I could feel, I can value, uh, or this is, this is good. This is bad, right? She's able to make these judgments based on the information that she's extracted from the heads of Cayman, Marcelino, and Anthrax, right? So, yes, yeah, psychometry. Thank you, David Taylor. It was psychometry. Extroverted sensing is psychometry. Thank you. I appreciate that. So, yes. Um, so, yes. So, she uses her telepathy just like any TE user. Cayman uses his telepathy. He's also looking at anthrax right now. He's shooting his little telepathic arrows over with his bow, right? to uh, anthrax and extracting those thoughts and then Cayman is coming to his own value judgments or how he feels about what anthrax is thinking and he is also doing this other thing rational what does rational also do it compares compares is weighing it out right the comparison is the weighing it out right and comparing data comparing thoughts so Candace is over here with CMA, and she is literally comparing what everybody thinks about a particular subject, right? What everyone is, and she's comparing it, and then because she's comparing it, she's weighing it out. And what has more value? What has more value to me, right? Based on what these three gentlemen are telling Candace in her over 9,000 red hair Super Saiyan state because she just passed Super Saiyan Blue and became Super Saiyan Red for some reason. I don't know. Take it up with Akira Toriyama. Um, so the, the bottom line is, is that this is literally how FI works. It's all about weighing out everyone else's thinking. And then once she has made a decision on like, okay, yay, it's good, yay, and then she will apply it to her own self and it becomes an FI principle or an FI value, a personal value, right? Or a standard, basically, right? A standard from which she will live her life, basically, at this point, right? No, it is not ultra instinct. No, it's not. I think Ultra Instinct is kind of like introverted sensing. Just saying. Um, wow, do we really discuss that much anime on the show? Um, uh, I, 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 I don't know, Candace, but that's a good point. Um, so anyway, uh, so this is literally how FITE works inside of its axis. This, this just. This is literally it. So there's actually another way to look at it as well. So let's go down here. Let's look at it this way. And this is the, a traditional example that I've used here a lot on this show. So this time we're gonna get Mr. Marcelino in the house. All right, so we got, uh, we got Marcelino right here. And he's got his bow right here. And uh, he's, He's ready to kick ass. Um, so this is uh, this is Marcelino. Um, he's got his uh, he's got his uh, I don't know his his Seahawks hat on. All right, cool. Marcelino, you've just become a Seahawks hat uh, Seahawks fan. All right, so we got Marcelino in the house. He even's got Seahawks color right now too. I mean, this is great. This is working out perfect. So we got Marcelino. So then we have a table, and then we have another 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 table. And he's like, okay, I got my, my arrow going over at this table, right? You know, and he's got his arrow. And then we got this arrow here. And then here. And 
And I'm just drawing arrows right now. Hold on. Obviously, we're drawing arrows. Okay, cool. So at these tables. But then he's got these other people that he's extracting thoughts from. Sitting at these tables. So this is why TE users love networking so much because they have so much people. But here's the thing, there's other people at these tables. We got we got people all over the place. So let's just imagine that there's a ton of dudes standing in a straight line behind every single table, etc. But it's a lot of people. And he's got his expert thinking, he's got his bow, and he's going to shoot his, uh, his little thought, his little thought piercing arrows around everywhere and create a little uh, telepathic tunnel between him and all these people at the same time. And he's going to assess everyone's thinking around him. You know? Yes, thank you for the frying pan uh, joke. Okay? So he's cool. He's got it. And then we come down here, and then everything is true and false and true and false and true and false T F T F T F okay true false true false true false now some of these people let's say he's like okay up oh, scratch you you're true scratch you you're false scratch you you're true scratch you you're false scratch you you're false scratch you you're false scratch you you're true Scratch you, you're true. Scratch you, you're true. Scratch you, you're true. Scratch you, you're false. Scratch you, you're true. Scratch you, you're false. Scratch you, you're true. And he takes all of his data and it's added up inside of his head and then he weighs it out with his little scale, etc. Um, that he has as well. And then it equals out to be true why because the majority of all of these people said true and he's making his decision based on consensus consensus that's the other way to look at uh rationale is consensus this is especially a problem when you're dealing with a te child or a te inferior because they lack introverted thinking so much if they're a TE parent or a TE uh, hero, it's not as big of a deal. But it's really a big of a deal with extroverted thinking child and extroverted thinking inferior because if you're just one person, like say you're in a relationship with them and, they're, and you're just one person telling them something, they're not going to listen to you because their telepathy is just going to be like, well, how do you know that? How do you know that? How do you know that? The thing is, is that you're not able to help them come to a decision about a moral problem that they have because their principles are not going to change until you bring in more people within like potentially a romantic relationship. Let's say you're complaining about your husband and he's a TE child or a TE inferior and he's not listening to you. So you have to publicly shame him by talking about that private matter with him with multiple people and getting all of their opinions so that all of those people, especially like if he's an ESFP because he lives in the moment, all those people have to tell him the exact same thing at the same time so that his brain reaches consensus so that at that point he's actually willing to listen to his wife and realize that he's actually in the wrong. Okay? So yes, it's the old expert thinking survey, right? And this, in order to conduct the survey, you have to fire multiple arrows, hit multiple targets. This is why the bow is symbolizing extroverted thinking. Now, from an introverted feeling standpoint, the other way around, it's actually more of a spear. So look at it this way. And this is another way of looking at reaching consensus. Okay? The spear. All right? So we're going to draw... We're gonna draw a spear now. All right, so Cayman, you're up, bro. This, this is not, uh, this is not gonna work. This is not Cayman's spear. We're gonna do it right. We're gonna do Cayman's spear correctly. 
Cayman Spear, his FI Rainbow Spear. That's right, Cayman. You got your FI Rainbow Spear. It came from the bottom of the ocean, and Captain Jack Sparrow had to save it. All right. All right. And a little tiny handle wrap here, you know what I'm saying? It's got a spear, right? All right. Dun dun dun. Each table can represent different premises, different topics entirely, but the comparison is still being made to reach a uh, consensus. All right, so we got we got Cayman's uh, rainbow spear here. It's looking pretty good, very unicornish. We got this going on, nice. I know you guys just absolutely love to watch me, uh, you know, paint fun pictures it's for all of us. Um, and uh, in fact, I'm even going to draw another spear on the side here, which I just failed at. Sorry, I failed at again. Still failing at, but I kind of just don't care after so many failures. Yeah, yeah, it sucks. Right, I'll just fill it in, shade it in, because why not? Alright, rainbow spear thing. But then, we're going to put a little knife, jagged edge thing coming off. Okay. Alright, so there we go. And what FI does... From the FI point of view, whereas TE is using the bow, if FI is going to be initiating this thing on the bow, FI is going to gather up those ideas by sticking all of those ideas at the end of the FI, at the end of the spear, every time. Okay? You see what I just did there, right? All right. So it's all about sticking a bunch of ideas. It's like you know when you're uh, when you're spear fishing and whatnot, and every fish you catch with your spear is an idea, right? It's an idea. The thing is, is that it's attached to your values. You are picking which instead of surveying with TE, which is primarily what like a a TE hero or a TE parent would do. If you have an FI parent or an FI hero, it's backwards. So instead, you have a spear that you're using with your FI, and the TE is actually really on the end, and you're spearing all of the fish that you value. You see a lot of fish around you. You see a lot of ideas around you. Lots of fish, right? I mean, come on, I, I have to draw a fish here, okay? Yeah, I, okay, I, I'm drawing a fish. There's a fish. Oh, got another fish. Oh, got another fish, right? because you're spearing multiple fish, but you're only spearing specific fish. Let's say there's like five or six different kinds of fish. Let's say we got a, we have a blue fish, right? We have a green fish, right? And then we have red fish, but you, the FI user, you only value red fish. So using your FI spear to only stab the red fish that are in front of you, right? This is how FI works, right? Yes, four stickmen did get stuck. Um, yes. So this is literally how the FI spear works. This is why it's known as the spear, because when you're doing it from the perspective of FI as your starting point on the axis, you're choosing which ideas you already value ahead of time instead of starting the survey and collecting everybody's ideas and then determining a value from it. But if you're doing the spear, you're already front-loading the value or the principle you have, and you're just trying to collect new ideas with your extroverted thinking with maybe a smaller survey or only getting specific ideas or specific data points to help you have a better standard, a better principle. It's like when you're doing research and it's like, I have to do fitness research. I already know a lot because I've done survey after survey after survey of all the people that I know and all these books that I've read throughout my TE survey. 
but I, there's only just a few pieces missing, and I don't want to spend time reading every book in the library because I'm not going to be able to read every book in the library. Who has time for that? And a lot of that would be a complete waste of time. So I'm only going to look and thump, pretend to be like Ty Lopez and thumb through this book to only find the specific ideas I'm looking for to complete my theory or to complete my system or to complete my way of doing things, right, with my FI spear. So I'm going to go into this book and I'm going to spear out that idea that I want. Oh, there's another one I want. I'm going to spear that one out. It's another red fish. Oh, another red fish idea. I speared that one. Great. And then you take it away instead of conducting this huge ass survey with your TE. Although TE users who are TE parent and TE hero will rely more on the survey. Whereas an FI hero or an FI parent will rely more on the spear approach. Do you guys see what I'm saying? Am I making any sense here? No, please. Oh my gosh, the guy that literally said psychometry is now talking about Dr. Seuss and my NE told me he would be the guy to mention Dr. Seuss. This is why I put in a green fish. I was trying to avoid that. Apparently it didn't go over so well, okay? So, anyway. These are literally the mechanics of how the third axis works. Rationale. Rationale helps you survey so you can create a consensus and make a decision based on the consensus of data that you have gathered, okay? Or information that you have gathered so that you can create a standard based on all the information you surveyed with your TE, with your bow, basically. Or if you've already conducted a survey or you're not interested in doing a survey, then you use your spear to go find out what, go find precisely which ideas you actually do value, right? This is how it works. Super mega important that you guys understand this distinction. Why? Because in your personal growth, okay, in your own personal growth, as people, if you are a high TE user, if you're a TE hero or a TE parent, expert thinking hero parent, so if you're a ESTJ, ENTJ, INTJ, ISTJ, it's your responsibility. You guys are amazing at surveys, but in order for you to develop your subconscious, to develop the other sides of your mind, you need to actually figure out what your actual values, what your actual principles are, so that you can actually pull out the spear every now and then and find out what ideas you actually value so that you could take more responsibility and then be more precise. It's also what stops you from getting in analysis paralysis, right? Super important. For you FI heroes and you FI parents, however, you guys need to actually take the time and have the patience to conduct surveys more often instead of just picking and choosing ideas that you like because at that point as much as you accuse ti users of having a, um, an echo chamber in their own heads based on you know thoughts that they want to hear based on uh, ideas they only want to listen to ideas that they want to hear you're doing the same thing by cherry picking a dot, uh, ideas that, that uh, already support your personal value system instead of being confronted with an entirely different value system that may conflict with yours. And after you've taken that survey and you realize there's consensus and that consensus is already against your pre-existing value system, you would have to actually admit that you would have to change your value system. And then that would mean you'd actually have to do something. Oh, but I'm not in the mood to do that, right? It's super important that you understand the difference between spear and bow. And you understand how and when to use which of these mental tools to get you where you need to go. It is absolutely critical that you understand where to take them. You can be picky and choose the red fish, choose the specific ideas that fit your own personal narrative, your own TE narrative, your own TE standard that you created after your survey or whatever, right? 
or a standard that you already had based on how you were already feeling, regardless of your survey. Either way, you as an FITE user are open to ignorance. You are at risk of being ignorant. FI heroes, FI parents, if you're being choosy about which ideas you consider and allow to integrate with your value system, you are at risk of choosing ideas that only fit your narrative and fit your personal principles, which can lead to your principles because you're showing favoritism to ideas. That means you're at risk of being ignorant because if you don't consider ideas that completely fly in the face of your own personal value system, you are at risk of ignorance and you think you're being wise by choosing you know, the ideas with your spear that fits your value system. You think you're being wise when the reality of the situation is you're being ignorant and you're potentially increasing the ignorance of the world because you're doing that. Conversely, High TE users with TE Hero and TE Parent, if you're going to rely on surveys all the time, do you actually have your own value system? Are you actually developing your own principles and your own values and your own standards? Or are you just going to keep querying and pulling everybody around you and outsourcing your thinking to those people all the time? I'm not saying that an FI hero or an FI parent can do this because they definitely do do it, especially the older they get. But I'm just talking about it's more of a primary versus secondary role between FI heroes, FI parents compared to TE heroes and TE parents. Understand that you're also at risk of being ignorant because you're not willing to actually take a stand how many times do you see ISTJs constantly querying people and they always take for credit for things that they said in the past, but when it really actually matters in the moment, they never actually take responsibility and make the claim that, yeah, and they never actually put forth their value system and they're trying to protect their FI child and they're like, oh, well, I'm not going to admit that I care about that because I don't want to look bad. So they end up keep querying people for information. They keep surveying people for information. They keep trying to get consensus from others. And they will only say something if, the, if their value system matches the consensus. Wow. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's completely ridiculous. Anthrax, if you want to, go ahead. Just do it. It's fine, man. You can share it. It's all good. You, you, you literally can't do this, guys. You have to grow up. FITE users, you have to grow up. If you want me, a TI user, to like not be biased, stop being biased with your little spear choosing which ideas. The spear is biased because you are cherry-picking which ideas which may or may not fit your value system. And if you're only choosing the ideas that will fit your value system, you're actually being biased. And that's why... FI users, especially FI heroes and parents, are the most biased of all the types, even though they're the first people to complain about bias. Wow. So annoying. But that's what happens. ISTJs, are, like I said, are afraid to take the position because they don't want to have the consensus you know, change their value system. They don't want to have to take a stand and put their value system forward because they haven't spent enough time defining for themselves what their value system actually is. It's even harder for FI inferiors, right? That's why FI inferiors would rather listen to what other people tell them and outsource their thinking so that they are at less risk of being seen as a bad person. So they put all the responsibility on the group. This TE heroes and TE parents do it all the time. They put all the thinking responsibility from the group and they outsource their thinking to the group. I'm not saying that FI heroes and, and parents don't do it. They still do it, but it's a secondary role where it's primary for TE uh, heroes and TE parents. And it's, a and, it's a pri and it's a secondary role for TE heroes and parents to use their spear to cherry pick ideas. To cherry pick ideas that... They're biased. I'm still saying FITE users are still more biased than TIFE users. I'm still saying that. But I'm also saying that FI heroes and FI parents are still more biased 
than the TE heroes and the TE parents if we're going to compare the TE users apples to apples. You see? The only bias a TI user has is by having preferred input. Preferred input from other TE users. What they what they want to hear, what they want to hear from there, that's the only time they're biased. Otherwise, they're actually really objective if they're not doing that preferred favoritism towards what input they're getting from T users because expert thinking is all about input and providing input, okay? Remember, guys, remember this model. I've said it before and I've said it multiple times and I'll say it again, okay? Using the rainbow, TE, okay? And then it goes to TI and then it goes to FE and then it goes to FI, okay? What does that mean? We have rationale or the survey and then we have logic right then we have ethics and then we have morals right which reality is look at it this way data information wait a minute this is getting into that uh uh information data pyramid uh oh output oh but that's not it it actually is knowledge, knowledge, and then we have wisdom, okay? And data, look at it this way, input, process, output, and feedback. Everyone's always talking about feedback. I want to give you good feedback. That's an FI user. If they say the word feedback, they're talking FI. Okay, output is an FE thing, it's knowledge. Okay, information you need information to process things and TI processes, and it needs data to process with, so that's why TE provides the input. The TI user is being biased in that they're ch choosing what they prefer, what data they prefer to listen to when they process. But TE, an FITE user, FI is biased with what it prefers, what it what ideas it values before it creates input to give to a TI user. So that's where its bias is. Okay? So bias exists here and bias exists here. But because bias over here is based on the subjective system of values, it's technically more subjective whereas this is objective. TI is objective. Now, TE can be objective as well. How? Well, process of survey. It's the survey practices. Are they following best survey practices? Are they being responsible in their survey? Do they have controls, right? That's how TE becomes objective, okay? So TE can be objective, but TE is still a consensus. It's still based on consensus. And even though it's the objective function to the FI subjectivity, and subjective is here for FE, for TIFE, and then FI is um, subjective as well because it's values. Still, yes, TE is an, can be an objective function, but because TI still is based on facts, kind of like a machine, it's like a CPU, it's just machine, machine language, it still means the TIFE user is technically more objective, but just barely compared to a TEFI user. That's not to say that a TEFI user can't be objective. They can be objective if they're managing their TE properly and how they're using their surveys, etc. FE is definitely subjective because it's whether or not the knowledge that has been produced by TI is, and you heard it here, folks, is it accepted? Is it accepted by others? Now, if there's affiliative in there and it goes against the affiliative, it won't be accepted. So it doesn't mean if it's true and it's accurate, it could still be rejected by people as well because it doesn't fit their little affiliative or their social narrative, okay? 
which could also potentially corrupt the FI value system, which lends it to its subjectivity as well. This is why F functions are subjective, T functions are objective, but TI, because it's the introverted function, is still more objective than TE. And FI, you know, because it's values and whatnot, and it's at the end. Wisdom, however, is the more objective form of the subjectivity of FI. That's probably really confusing, but I had to break it down into small tiny pieces for you folks to understand exactly where spear and bow actually fit into this model. All right. So, yeah, is it ethically viable? Yes. Well said. Well said, Cayman. So we're going to move down here now. And everyone's favorite part of these lectures. Okay, all right, so let's, uh, let's write some sentences. I don't value what you think. Uh, why do you think that is good. Um, okay, let's see. Um, uh, I am not in the mood for your stupid. Okay, that's a that's an interesting one. Uh, I believe this is a good thing. Um, I feel bad that they think I do bad work, okay? Yeah. So let's take a look. I don't value what you think. I don't value, that's FI, what you think, that's TE. Okay. Why do you think that is good? That's TE. Why do you think? I'm not in the mood for your stupid. Your stupid. That's TE label. Okay. I believe this is. I believe this. This is TE. Okay. I feel bad that they think I do bad work. They think I do bad work. Wait. They think I. So. They think. Right. TE, right? That is good. So why do you think that is good? That's an FI statement. I am not in the mood. That's an FI statement. Um, is a good thing. That's an FI statement. I feel bad. That's an FI statement. I do bad work. Another FI statement. See how they get chained together? Folks, this is proof right here that our very language in our sentences expresses the cognition coming right out of our egos. This is literally how it goes. This is straight up FITE cognitive axis, the third cognitive axis according to cognitive mechanics here in season 18. These sentences are just examples of how you can literally translate people's words into cognitive functions. You can literally take this and make an AI system to crawl all of social media and psychoanalyze people by a quadra, for example, as well as other parameters, I'm sure, to at least at a minimum identify their quadra and eventually with additional data that you can gather from other vectors, determine and psychoanalyze their type in real time. As a result of doing this, uh, 
You could even introduce external stimuli, uh, market to that person, run ads, etc., specifically to get uh, you know a chance for them to, to elicit a certain response. Uh, you could even set up a bot to talk to them, uh, and it could be a sales bot, um, or it could be for illicit purposes, or it could be for good purposes. It could be charity. Doesn't matter. You can literally ego hack somebody with an AI system that is aware of these concepts. It's not that hard. Okay, that's just reality. Anyway, folks, this concludes uh, the season 18 uh, cognitive mechanics, the third axis, spear and bow. It is now time to begin our question and answer session uh, in relating uh, to this lecture. Uh, please go ahead and uh, state your questions in the live chat regarding FITE. I'd appreciate that. Pretty cool whiteboard, huh? I'll put it back up for you guys. TI Child God Complex. Actually, you know what, ER, you bring up a good point. I actually got into a huge argument last night with TI Child. And they are trying to tell me that, like, for example, they're trying to tell me with their, their religious beliefs, and they're trying to tell me through biblical scripture, because I get in debates about this all the time. That's why I'm so good at understanding biblical scriptures, so that I can, uh, you know, go toe-to-toe -to -toe with those super Christians out there who like to Bible thump, or these people who you know, try to ruin other people's lives with their bullshit church tradition by trying to tell other people that they're in sin when in reality the situation they're not in sin. And they're trying to tell me what the, the definition of sexual immorality was. And I'm like, uh-uh-uh, you're not defining it properly. So I actually pulled out so many references and so many resources and so many articles and uh, of so much different information, regardless of bias, positive or negative, and, and neutral and provided all of those to that TI child at that moment and completely and utterly overwhelmed that TI child to the point where they literally had to get off the phone and go spend some time thinking about what I said only for them to later accept what I said was the case and that they were completely wrong. So yes, TI child can and will budge, but you have to be willing to overwhelm that TI with such amazing input and collected objectively so that that ti cannot deny what you're saying to them <clears throat> all right so marcelino's in here uh thank you sir for being with us uh you mentioned that having controls during te surveys is one way to survey responsibly what do you mean what that means is, is that when you're conducting your surveys and you're asking people a question, don't ask your questions in such a way where they're forced to give a certain kind of answer to fit your narrative, to fit your value system. Ask them questions in such a way where you maintain neutrality. Try to maintain neutrality with your surveys and asking people questions so that there is an equal chance of them uh, providing you an affirmative or a negative, basically, or a disagree, agree or disagree, as a result of your survey when you're surveying people, okay? Because, and then take note of the people who disagree with you and be willing to ask why they disagree with you so you can find out a little bit more so maybe your survey's wrong, so you can resurvey, basically. Um, so, yeah. Um, but yeah, and uh, a control is is you do run the same survey again with different people, and if you and if you had your first survey where you had to ask the question a certain way, ask the same question but in the opposite way, and see if you still get the same results. If you get the same results, you know you're on something. If you get different results, either the topic or the questions are wrong, or the survey itself is corrupt, and you have to start over. But you need to have the patience to do that. It's really, really important. That's why I like TE parents, because TE parents are usually really responsible in that area. Because that's the power of TE parent being responsible. So. 
Could you sell a phrase that a philosopher would say using all of their cognition? Um, yes, hold on, there's another question. James Morkins in the house. Do FI users have an easier time asking things or favors of people than TI users? Yes, absolutely they do. Because TI users have extroverted feeling and extroverted feeling carries the risk of self-deprecation and they end up often feeling bad if they need to uh, ask other people for help. Now, if an FE user is combined with like an SI inferior in the case of an ENTP, there is a habit that Benjamin Franklin and ENTP created where he's like, hey, if you ask somebody for a favor, you're more likely that they will give you additional favors later because he understood the pride of fellow FE users and how he could take advantage of them in that particular moment, uh, which is just a recommendation from Benjamin Franklin from a social engineering standpoint. So keep that in mind as well. Um, could you show a phrase that a philosopher would say using all of their cognition? Um, okay. Okay. Um, okay, I got one. Here it is. Um, use black ink. Why do you want me to believe that it is a good idea for me to cheat on my wife? question mark okay so let's break that down why do you want me okay that is an e all right to believe that that is t e that is a good idea this is f i right there you go. There's a full sentence for you. Why do you want me to believe that is a good idea for me to cheat on my wife? That is a philosopher's sentence right there. Okay. Uh, when communicating with extroverted thinking, use I think statements. When communicating with FE, use I feel statements. That is correct, Blue Ox. It's a form of social engineering. If you just change your words slightly, if you just change your words, you know exactly you will get you will elicit a certain kind of response based on their ego so if you can type them with the type grade and you know what their ego is or at a minimum know what their quadra is you don't even have to know what their actual type is but if you know what their quadra is you uh you can change this all the time and this happens to me all the time even in my own marriage in order sometimes to get railgun my estp wife to listen to me more instead of saying i think or making statements around her i'll ask te questions well how do you know that right I'll just immediately, I'll just switch on her. Or or I'll be like, I don't believe that. It, when, I, when I say I don't believe that, which really I'm saying, my TI parent is saying I don't think that, but I'm making it come out as TE critic saying I don't believe that, and it causes her to like instantly rethink her position when I'm like, I don't believe that. Or when I'm trying to make her feel good, I'm like, I believe this about you. I believe this good thing about you, right? It's how I emulate FITE for her benefit, right? Granted, she's not as skilled as being able to change her words for my benefit, but she's getting there. Um, but it is possible, especially if you know that this science exists and how you can just adjust your words on the fly to elicit responses. Because if you change your words on the fly specifically for the benefit of the other person's cognition, you're literally doing how to win friends and influence people from Dale Carnegie. It's not that hard, folks. It's not that hard. Because it's not that hard, and now that I've taught you how to do it, it's your responsibility to do it. You might want to pay attention, right? You know? Other times, I, I, I tell her, I'm not in the mood for that. What I'm really saying is, I just I just don't want to do that, or, or I'm not comfortable with that. But sometimes, I'll be like, I'm not in the mood for that, as if I'm an FI user. Or I'll say, I don't value that. Or I really value you. Or yeah, I'm in the mood for that. Even though that's not really 
who I actually am, but I say it for her benefit, right? To make her marriage better. That is very loving for anyone to do when they're in a relationship, okay? Try to translate your words for your audience, folks. It's so important. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, yes, you could easily insult a philosopher. You can insult anyone just by putting together, you know, things. Like, I've I've literally gone up to uh, like one time, I uh, um, just to kind of like assert dominance over like this ENTJ woman that was being really rapey towards me in a bar situation. And she came up to me and introduced herself because she wanted to, like, take me home and whatnot. I'm like, I asked her, so could you explain to me why you believe you're not a bad person? I hit her hero and I hit her inferior in the face right at the moment. Like, instantly. Uh, and, I hit, and because it's her inferior function, it caused, like, an extreme amount of pain in her. Right? And I'm like, yeah, I mean, that's what she get. Like, I, I wanted to her to get away from me because she was coming off like super rapey towards me. And I'm just like, no, get away, you know? So I'm like, explain to me why you, explain to me, that's introverted sensing, give me the experience, you know? Explain to me uh, why you believe, T.E. believe, her belief, that you aren't being a bad person right now, F.I. inferior, okay? Simple, simple as that. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Fair enough. I think I've been able to. Uh, um, I think I've been able to really hammer this uh, point home, and whatnot. So. But awesome. Any other questions? Hi, kitty. All right. Guys, think I should uh, release this one uh, to the public to show people that season 18 actually is a thing and they should probably uh, sign up for our emails so that they get the rest of them, you know? You guys think I should do that? <laughs> yeah. Let's see how that goes, huh? Hi, Kitty. Hi. Hi. <laughs> all right. Got a lot to think about. Yeah, it's all good. Cool. All right, we got another question. Zara's here, and... Uh, does being friends with someone uh, with your side of the mind personality help you develop that side? Yes, yes, definitely. That's camaraderie. The answer is yes, Zara. Um, uh, uh, what, what do you mean, Anthrax, by that question? And let's keep it on topic, too. I'm just, can you uh, figure that out? Um, could you show us a Wayfarer phrase? A Wayfarer phrase, okay. Um, hmm. Okay. All right, yeah, how about this one? Why do I want to value this process when it has proven that it just slows everyone down? That's a way for way of doing it, kind of like an ENTJ, INTJ approach, complaining about a business process, okay? Uh, and... All right. Okay, yeah, I'll talk. I'll talk to. Uh, I'll talk to the guys, and we'll get this one, this particular episode out. 
Um, does T parent and FI child make it so you use both correctly more often? No, not necessarily. Uh, you still have to recognize as a TE hero or a TE parent that you have the responsibility of being willing to use the spear and not just rely on the bow is basically what I'm saying. And it's the other way around for FI users. My cat is just like, I don't know, she's just kind of like laying on the side of my legs and just kind of like, you know, this is, she's this, you know. <laughs> All right, cool. Okay. Uh, a crusader response to that question. Uh, okay. Um, that's, uh, okay. I'll do a crusader response to that question. Um, okay. That's not my responsibility because the higher ups want this. And besides, I think it would work anyway because it's worked for me and I've had good results with it. That's a, res a crusader response. Is it important to value a TE user's opinion if you are a TE trickster? Yes. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Look, guys, if you're a TI user, it is your responsibility. Just because you are the more objective person in the room, if you're surrounded by TE users, it is your responsibility to ask the TE users their opinions because if you're not asking them their opinions, then you may as well just be that biased, subjective person that they already believe you to be. That goes away when you ask them their opinions. And besides, it is written, a wise man has many counselors. So it is wise to ask TE users their opinions. If you don't ask them their opinions, you're ignorant. What are you doing? All right. Templar response. No, I'm going to save that for, for next time. <laughs> Is it important to value it? Yeah, okay. Anyway, folks, that concludes this episode and this uh, Q&A session. Thank you all for watching. And uh, I'll say about maybe publicly releasing just this one. We'll see. Uh, but uh, it's been a uh, fantastic uh, stream. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this lecture, Season 18, Cognitive Mechanics, the third axe of Spear and Bow. And with all that being said, folks, I'll see you guys tonight. Ja, ne.